Hello, this is Background Designer and as you can see we have to allocate a folder for our custom brushes. Now it's loaded up and on the right you'll see some categories here and some brushes. So you can choose any of these and just start kind of plotting these down. Um, might be thinking to yourself, well why are they green and pink? Well, they don't have to be. That's just these colours here that you can modify. And you can make it have any colours that you want, really. What else can you do? Well, if you press 1, you can get some opacity. Or 2, 3, 4, 5. In fact, it's all here. If you press 0, it's 100%. If you press 1, it's 10%. You can use the slider here. Okay, Backspace is going to clear everything. There's also a menu up here for various things. It's a help panel to get you started. And yeah, what can we make? Well, there's trees. I'm going to press 0 so I get full opacity again, or I could have just slid to the right here. Now if I slide this to the left, you'll see the original colours that I used to make this brush. And it's kind of weird because it's like red, green and blue. But those colours actually interpret into here for blue tones, green tones and red tones. So the blue tones that were there, basically I can change to like a brown. The black tone is the base. Let's make that a slightly lighter tone than it is. And so on. Okay, so you've got your brushes, you can make some trees, customise this tree a little bit. I'm using shift in the mouse wheel to scale down. You can press X or Y to flip the brush. Now I've got some other things here. If you hold down the right mouse button, you can pan around. There's no zoom function. We don't really need that. I'm going to go over to the foliage. And I can put some foliage in the trees. Now, I don't like this pink, so I'm just going to swap that out for a nice rusty green like that. Maybe make these a little bit more green tinted. If I want, I can take away some of these tones and just be left with whatever's underneath. Make that bit bright up. That looks nice. Press X and R. R is to rotate, so is E. So E and R will rotate. Shift and mouse wheel to scale down a bit. Swap for different foliage and this one X to flip it horizontally. Just want these to match a little bit better. And to mix it up, I'll just add this one. It's going to go a little behind. And add these in here. There we have a pretty good looking tree. Uh, I'm going to press space just to see it with different backgrounds. Now I like this tree that much that I want to save it for next time. So I'm just going to kind of center the image and press I to get rid of the background. And I can basically do Control L to save out that layer. And I'll save this as tree. So to load this in, I'm just going to go to the user section and find our tree. And it's going to save it under a new name. So I'll call this Autumn Tree. One. Okay. 
and there you go. As you can see, it's already swapped the colors. And press tab and I can get various other colors based on the base color. I'm going to press F5 to reset the tones. You can see most of it, if I bring this to the left, you'll see that's going to show me the original tone. I'm just going to use backspace to clear everything. And then we can see the brush. You can see these are the tones that it's going to get. Because it's mostly red and green tones in here, there's not much control with blue. You can see it's doing just very little. So the red and the green tones seem to be doing the best. Especially the blue, especially the green, actually. But we can go in between somewhere and get some of the original color back and just use tab to get variation. I'm going to press I to bring back the background and shift and scroll to go down a bit. You can see I can start to make a pretty looking scene with these kind of trees. Scale them up a bit, tab to get a little variation in the tone. Now that, what you saw there, was wrap mode. If I press W, basically it's going to replicate the scene and show me even more things. Now I'm just going to press the middle mouse button to reset because we're kind of seeing a different representation there. There might be a few bugs with background designer at this point. But so far everything's good. So middle mouse button will reset that view. And I'm just going to put in a few more trees. I'm going to load in another tree that I made before. As you can see, it's the same kind of stem, but different leaves. And use shift and mouse wheel to scale it up. Right, let's just make this so big it's in the foreground. If we really want it to be in the foreground, I'm going to go to higher layer and click that there. And now it's definitely in front. If I press P, you'll see the parallax effect. It's a good way of judging distance of things. Back to the autumn tree here and press P to turn that off. And I'm just going to go down to a layer of these trees and the layer 9 and I'm just going to go to the layer below it and select black and control click so that all tones get black and make sure I'm using the full mix and I'm just going to rotate this around and Maybe just scale this a bit. Just want to kind of hide the shadow there. Doing something like that could help make it more believable. Go ahead and add grass and things like that as well. Let's go to a higher layer and pressing tab will pick some colors nearby or randomize them. Every now and again, you'll see a little box appear that's going to sample within that area. And you can use uh, the scaling to work that out. So if you scale up, you see it samples a bigger area. I'm just going to add in some grass. Just here and there. The 
what about this guy? Let's go further down and pick some clouds. I'm just going to pick the tab again. Now I quite like that last tone, so I'll just do Shift and Tab. And I'm going to add in some of these. So I'm just going to click that down, press X, and click on here. And let's actually press 4 so it fades out a bit and scroll down. And we can start to layer up some further away ones. Add some extra clouds. Now let's say we want to go really bright. I'm just going to bring these right up to white. Control click. And now we got some lighter clouds. Let's say like this one, uh, it looks all white, but down the bottom right you can see the different tones. Now if I come over to the colors here, you can see if I switch it to the original, you can see these tones can be worked out. So I'll slide this to transparent mode and start to take away some of these tones. And I'm basically just left with these little bits and I can dot these in. I can see some sort of nice hill form from that cloud. So I'm going to use that to my advantage and kind of lay that in down here to make it look like the hills are catching the, the sun, the cloud light. Okay. What other brushes have we got? So we've got some pathways. Let's add in a little path here. So I'm just going to press 0 to reset that and F2 to reset these levels. And it's going to move up to layer 11. And press tab a few times to see if we get something that works. like this but maybe a bit darker so we can take some of those tones just click on them so they update and let's actually make this more of a grey looking path now I want to be under the shadows so I'll just go to layer 7 and let's just scale this up a bit Now I'm under the shadows and there's some grass overlaying there. That's fine. What else can I add? I well, could put a pylon in. Maybe in the foreground. Let's switch it out so it's pointing to the left and let's tab a few times to see what we get. You can also tab over a certain area for it to pick up the colours. Make sure you scale down. It's quite nice. Let's actually make one a bit more dark. Like that. Now you can see it's poking through this side. It's because we've got the wrap mode on. If I press W, basically we switch that off. But you can see how some things have changed. That's one of the bugs and that needs fixed. I think I know what it is. I'm going to update that soon. Anyway, wrap mode seems to be pretty good. Uh, let's place that in there. And we can add a little cabin somewhere, maybe in the distance. There we go, that looks good. I want to put that in a layer that makes sense, like um, near the trees. Because if you do the parallax effect, you can see everything's a little bit off. Don't really need that though. Okay, so I'm just going to figure out what's going on with the wrap mode. But for now, 
that's it for this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.